Jennifer Foley, your local realtor and host of Live Love Clarington. And on today's video, we are with Michael Pipes. Oh, oh, Michael Parks. Parks Michael Pipes. Parks. I get that though. I get pipes in town from time to time. Today, Michael and I are meeting, and Michael's going to give us a little uh, pipe making 101. The, the tour of the workshop. Tour of the workshop. I make a lot of pipes uh, based on classic designs. When you think of old-fashioned smoking pipes, that's uh, most often what people are requesting. There are famous companies, turn of the century, usually English. Uh, Dunhill would be the, the most reputable and uh, well-known. And uh, so what I have here is a drawing, uh, well, a printout from a 1930s Dunhill catalog. And this particular shape happens to be called a bent print. Me try to figure out my six-sided bowl uh, from the bird's eye view to scale. I get customers from all over the world. This particular man's in Singapore. Uh, sketched me out the pipe that he wanted me to make for him. So he sends me a drawing, and then from that I will I scale the drawing, and that's how I generate my block size, and that's where I begin. How about it's called ebonite, and it's a uh, hardened rubber. In this case, uh, this is made in Germany. There's uh, a woman who does it actually as a, something of a hobby, and she makes these beautiful art examples. Ebonite, that's what you make the uh, pipes from? The mouthpieces. Okay. The pipes themselves are made from briarwood, and briarwood is a root that uh, comes from a tree that grows around the Mediterranean. Okay. I can show you. And so all, right. all tobacco pipes are made from the same wood. And this is an example of that in its uh, full burl form. These are dug by hand and then cut into blocks. The blocks are then boiled for 24 hours. And from that point, the wood needs to be dried for a minimum of two years in order to clear out enough moisture and stabilize it. So what are you doing here, Michael? I, I map out my blocks uh, before I drill them and then uh, also when I'm removing the wood. And since I'm working from square, I can trace lines using a flat surface and just clamping a pen at, at a desired height. So right now, what I'm doing is cutting a stem. The uh, mouthpieces on the pipes are handmade from solid rod stock. And so they need to be drilled, turned, and then sand shaped, sanded, polished, and sometimes bent. Now, Michael, what do we have here? These are two pieces that I'm finishing. Uh, the, sh the shape is more of a modern shape in pipe making called a blowfish. A blowfish. Uh, these ones are time consuming. This is, um, I'm approximately 40 hours into this piece and it's not yet finished. I, it will be about 45, I think. That's getting to the higher end of the scale of the amount of time I'll put into a pipe. We gotta, we love hobbies. Actually, uh, a lot of this as a hobby. And, uh, and it's, it's funny, as such, they don't necessarily smoke all the time. It's, it's not just what it's about. It's about the pipe, the collection, you know, the camaraderie. Here. September 16th, there's a pipe barbecue. We usually get a good turnout, approximately 50 people. And, uh, you know, it's free and there's uh, lots of smoking in pipes. And uh, we make pull, pulled pork for everybody. That, that's uh, okay. Here in my workshop, it's in conjunction with the uh, Lakeshore Smokestacks, the Pipe Club in Oshawa and the Downtown Toronto Pipe Club. Thanks so much, Michael. It's been great talking with you and learning all about the things that you do here, um, making pipes and in your workshop and mm -hmm. uh, for Parks Pipes. Well, thanks for coming out, Jen, checking it out. And yeah. if they want to find out more information about you, it's parkspipes.com. That's correct. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. See you next time.